five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, ladies and gentlemen, have any of you ever robbed a bank? No? Have any of you ever murdered anyone? I've seen a bank robbed. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> have any of you ever murdered anyone? No? Did you not do it because there was a law, or did you not do those things because you didn't think it was the right thing to do? Did, you, did any of you not do it because the law says you can't? No, of course not. You did it because you thought it, you didn't do it because you thought it was the right thing to do. So therefore, you would agree that on some things, a societal line that says you cannot cross this line through the versions of a law works because those laws are written not for the good people of society or the good people of any group, but for the handful of people who would break that law, who would cross that line. Is that a fair statement or you think that's an unfair statement? I assume that from your silence you assume it's a fair statement. That's what regulation is. It is not about the 80 to 90 to 99 percent of any group of people who do the right thing and do it well and do it professionally and adequately. It's about the one or two or three or five percent of the people who don't. That's what regulation is. Do any of you think that the SEC over the last 80 years has destroyed the economy? Do any of you think that the Fed has destroyed the economy? Well, we could debate Re that. Reasonable regulation <laughs> works. <laughs> reasonable regulation works. That's all we're talking about here. Is it a fair discussion to, dis to decide and debate where the appropriate line is? Of course it is. And those lines change over time because the economy changes, the situation changes, society changes. Absolutely, we all agree with that. But to say that there should be no regulation on, on some segment of any group belies the fact that humans have frailties. There's always somebody willing to cross the line. Now, I just ask another question. How many of you can tell me how many hedge funds are in the United States of America right now? How many are there? Not an estimate and not a range. How many? I, I think that's an unfair question. How is it an unfair question? How many are there? No one would know exactly. I can how tell many. you how many corporations there are. Not, can you tell me how many private corporations there are? I can tell you how many corporations there are that sell stock. Yes, I can. So we know. So you can't. Can you tell me how much money is under management by those hedge funds? Not an estimate and not a range. Tell me. Can you tell me how much of that money is put forth by institutional investors, so-called sophisticated investors who apparently weren't so sophisticated in the last year or so? Can you tell me how much money has been put forth by public institutional investors, such as pension funds, such as yours? The answer is you can't. I don't think those are unreasonable questions. No, with, with respect, you can. I don't have the number right in front you of me. You can't. Well, then I would, I would ask, if you can, I would ask you to submit that later on. I understand you may not have the top of your head. Because if you can, it, you're the only person in America who can. Well, just, just keep in mind, you know, for better or worse, every pension fund that's public you know, has to report. So that information is, is available. I, I understand that, elected. but pension funds are not the only ones who do it, number one. I'm just referring and to And number two, they don't all report uniformly. And number three, they don't report to a singular group. So I would love you to put together. I, would, I really would. I'd appreciate if you could get every pension fund in America, especially the public ones, I would love to see that number because you'd be the first one that ever put it together. And I would hope that you have the staff to do that, and I hope you do. How is it unreasonable to simply say, we want a general look. I'm not trying to be prurient. I'm certainly not trying to find out the investment ideas of individuals. That's not what we're looking for. I don't ask that from mutual funds. I don't ask that from banks. I don't ask that from pension funds. What we simply say is when you get to the point when you can move the economy, it is reasonable for society to say, show us something. Tell us what it is. Yes, sir, Mr. Baker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Capuano. I, I just want to point out, although I don't dispute the public need for understanding of something that is significant in the market, there are a lot of venture capital, private equity, totally private partnerships, and small hedge funds 
which should not be economically subjected to a rigorous registration regime. Totally agree. And that, where that standard or that line is drawn is, of course, your decision, but we would like to be involved in that discussion. Absolutely. We are on the exact same page. We may not be on the same page on what the answer is. Those are fair questions and reasonable questions. I would also argue that the 80-20 rule, it's a nice place to start, but it, again, without knowing the exact number, it seems that everybody agrees that hedge funds, just hedge funds, I agree, private equity shouldn't be treated any different. That anybody who, who can put enough money together on the table to move a market should be subject to some transparency. But if the number is a trillion dollars, 20% of that's 200 billion. If it's a trillion, it might be two trillion, we might be talking 400 billion. Now, if I were to sit here and suggest that 200 billion dollars be used, oh, say, for housing, my expectation that some of my colleagues might find that a little bit too much money. $200 billion is a lot of money. Still is, at least in my district. Just keep, so just I'm not saying that 80-20 is not a good place to start, but to simply say that that's the line, don't look below that, and they're subject to nothing, especially if they act as a herd, which many of them do, and you all know it, we all know it, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I don't think that these proposals, especially the one on the table, can be considered radical by anybody except those who are just absolutely beholden to the total idea of an absolute free market, which is fine. I respect that view. I just, number one, don't agree with it, and number two, think it's been proven wrong time and time and time again. Reasonable regulation is necessary for an effective, efficient, and equitable and stable economy. Where those lines are, as Mr. Baker points out, totally agree. That's the discussion we need to have. That's the discussion. The discussion is no longer, I think, amongst reasonable people about whether there should be some transparency. For those who want to hold to that, good luck. You go home and explain it to the people that you represent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I read. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.